It's been around more than 80 years. Some of the most vicious and intense competition you'll ever see. What is it? Extreme fighting. It originated in Brazil. Titanic matches lasting as long as an hour and a half before they were over. It is the ultimate battle of attrition with variables like martial arts and wrestling thrown in. Leave the judges at home. This is mano a mano. It ends when one band can't continue. It boils down to hold, movement, reversals, and knowing how to utilize leverage. What you'll see tonight is matches with a time limit and a five minute overtime for the championship match. Battle Cade presents Extreme Fighting. And we are ready to go. Hello everybody, I'm Dave Fonsepa. We're all excited for this match tonight. This cross martial arts reference here. We've got Sambo, Judo, Karate, Kickboxing, Greco-Roman Wrestling, and of course, the legendary Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. My partner and the matchmaker for this match tonight, John Peretti Jr., a four-time international kickboxing world champion. And John, do you agree the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is the most revered form here? Absolutely, these guys know it all. They're the toughest to compete against. They know ground fighting. They'll take you down there to prove it. So we've got that coming up. Now the legendary Gracie family, they come in here. They bring so much to the table. What is that mystique? 80 years of tried and true, working, working, working to get ahead and learn little techniques that no one else knows. Go beyond judo, go beyond Greco-Roman wrestling, and get to the real grappling of this world. Well, naturally, we have a Gracie to start off the program tonight. John, set us up with that. Hell, Gracie, one of the toughest little 159 pounders you ever see. He can punch, and he can grapple, and he can sit on you as long as he wants to. Battle Cade, all the Gracies and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu fighters want to prove more for the world. So my martial arts is better than you are martial arts. That's why he could be here. Or just prove it. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, and the legendary Gracie family, Health Gracie! There is Health Gracie coming in here, and John, definitely the look of a winner. Uh, you have no idea what you're going to see here. This is the most dominating influence on 159 pounds you have ever witnessed. This boy is a spectacle. Now, he might look like not the, not the most conditioned bodybuilder in the world, but this is an aerobic machine. This boy goes and goes and goes. Well, sometimes bodybuilding may not be the answer anyway because it will affect your flexibility. He looks like he's perfectly honed that way. It's the most, it's the most interesting fighter you're going to see in a long, long time. He upholds the heritage in a way that you wouldn't believe. As you get a good look at him and his opponent tonight, Makato Morooko comes in here knowing that he has to defeat a member of the legendary Gracie family. He's a kicking specialist, a totally different style. Let's take a look at him. This is uh, something nobody can do but us. Uh, we have a special technique, a skill. So this is, uh, so, some people say this is the uh, same as street fight, but I don't think so. This is a uh, total martial arts, I can say that. And his opponent coming to the ring now, from Sapporo, Japan, Makota Murioko. Makes his entrance 
They had to come in the haste for stock he built here. We've got a contract. He's a kicker, so he's going to have thicker waist from lifting his legs than the Brazilians do. Ralph Gracie, 12 and 0. Health going against Makoto Motooko, 8 and 0. One of the O's must go in this lightweight division, 159 and under. On my way from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, grandson of Jiu-Jitsu creator Carlos Gracie. Brother of Kenzo, with a record of 12 wins, zero losses, the 1993 Ballet Tudo champion. He is 24 years old, standing 5 feet 9 inches tall, weighing in tonight at 159 pounds. Introducing the infamous Health Gracie. From Sapporo, Japan, under the watchful eye of Benny the Jet Urquidez, with a record of 8 and 0. He is the grand champion of game shoot wrestling in Japan, with a black belt in Kirokai Shin Karate and Judo. He is 27 years old, standing 5 feet 9 inches tall, weighing in tonight at 159 pounds, Makota Marioko. Introducing your referee for this evening, ex-world champion in Russian Sambo and Judo, an undefeated five-time world bare-knuckled no-rules champion from Armenia, Gokar Shvichian. Well, the stage is set. We're ready to go here. John, now what does Motooko have to take away from Gracie here? Well, he's got to be more aggressive, and he's got to try to stop the onslaught. But when you see this whirlwind start, you know, just just be ready. Hold on to your seats, because this guy can rock. That's what I said. You really have to worry about the early going when you face him. Try to get out of the early stages. There he comes. See the style difference right away. Heavy, heavy right front foot, heavy left front foot. And look, he punches. And Gracie just showing something here. Rice to the head. You see the kicks attempted there by Murooko right in front of us here. Now see he the, tries to spin. Right. See the space. Big right hand and the counter. And there's the beginning of the fight right there. That's the position he wants to be in. He's been there a million times. He turned his back. The worst thing he can do to a Gracie. Turned his back. Made it so easy. He's got his neck. This fight is over. Wow. Very this fight quick. is over. He'll tap out. to the neck. Oh, no. Submission is what you want. He tries to come back. He has no idea how to escape from this position. And that's it the fight. John, very well described by you. He had no... He's unconscious. This happens in judo all the time. Okay, guys get choked out. They are not losing their air. It's just blood to the head. And the quick strangulation. You saw the referee right on top of that, too. Immediately looking for that. Oh, he's a great referee. He really knows what he's doing. You face a Gracie, legendary performer like that, and now they're talking to Murooko. As Gokar did a nice job staying right on top of it. He had good position there to observe the hold. I guess the referee has to make sure he's not blocked out by any particular angle. He knows exactly what he's doing. Well, this is the nightmare that Murooko faced right away. Gracie gets on top here, and he starts to pound the neck, John. Well, he put the hooks in. You see the legs. Those are the hooks. That's the control factor. If you don't remove the hooks, then the choke comes. As soon as the hooks are in, you have to remove them. If you get in a position like that, he's already going unconscious. He tries in futility to punch to the face. He has just not practiced escaping from a hold like this from such an anaconda like this boy. I think people watching for the first time would be amazed that you can put a person unconscious that fast with one hold. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's closing off the blood to each side of his head. Here we go again. Well, this is your second look at it. And Gracie... Watch the big right hand. Watches, watches as his opponent tries to cook the kicks, everything like that. He cannot get Gracie off balance. As Muda Oko looking for space. Right hand by Gracie, the first takedown right there. And actually, at this point, you're sensing the fight might be over here. I said it immediately. 
I mean, he goes to his back. He's just playing around by punching him. The punching is a distraction to get inside and to get that beautiful rear naked on his neck. Once Murooko had been taken down, what was his move to try? You, you can't let the legs get planted there. I guess that was key. As soon as he gets the hooks in, your game is over. You know, that Gene LaBelle type uh, finishing hold, boy, you know, that rear naked is a killer. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Penthouse Pet of the Year 1995. Gina LaMarca! Well, next one coming up, we'll get the introduction shortly. We've got Igor Zinoviev and Harold German. German 17-0, and Zinoviev 15-0. and Now, German was an alternate who came in here and a boxer, the only one in the competition, and he might be in for a rude awakening. You know, in my opinion, boxers can't defend themselves below their waist. What do you have to say about it? Well, that's something they haven't seen before, and boxers will come back and say, People in martial arts cannot take a punch because they're not practiced in taking it. They're practiced in blocking it, which is the whole discipline. But in boxing, of course, you spar, so you take shots. So boxers may have the chin, but this is about more than the chin. It's about all the moves combined. But that's what makes this mix of disciplines fun, I think. Absolutely. Igor Zinoviev is truly a great fighter. I mean, this guy has the best leg sweeps I have ever seen in the history of karate or judo. I like fight. I like fight. I like some decision, you know. But as a win. From St. Petersburg, Russia, please welcome Igor. Igor Zinoviev going through the final preparation here, John, as he I want you, 187 pounds. I want you to look at this guy and look at him hard. This boy is amazing. He is a physical specimen, and he doesn't lift weights. Is there a calorie of fat on this guy? I'd say he's about at 7% body fat. And he the referee checks him for a cup and checks him for a mouthpiece. He looks sculpted. Well, Harold German comes in here a very extroverted guy, very pleasant to talk to, believes that his boxing skills will make a big impact on this fight. This is his opportunity to find out. There's Harold German coming in. Of course, he is the one fighting Igor Zinoviev, not John Lewis, who was in this competition originally. Now, Harold German is giving away a lot of weight, John, as well. He's 168. In fact, initially slated to fight in the lightweight competition, bulked up a little bit. Now he's in here, and I'll tell you what, well, he never definitely made... different as far as uh, his outlook is concerned, too. Uh, more verbose than the martial artist. Oh, yeah. and But, you know, he never made 158. He was slated to fight six months ago at that time. He came in at 168. He looks like he's about at 175 by now. He's ready. We're all ready. Let's go to ring announcer Scott Berlinger. On my right, from St. Petersburg, Russia, the 1995 Empire State Games Judo Absolute Division Champion. He was the captain of the Russian judo team with a kickboxing record of 15-0. He is 28 years old, standing 6 feet 1 inches tall, weighing in tonight at 187 pounds, Igor Zinoviev. And on
on my left, from the Bronx, New York, fighting in the styles of American Muay Thai boxing, the Puerto Rican light heavyweight Golden Gloves champion with a record of 17 and 0. He is 21 years old, standing 5 feet 10 inches tall, weighing in tonight at 168 pounds, Harold Sherman. Igor Zinoviev and Harold German set to go. If I was oh a oh my God, the bad shape right. Oh now. my God, look at this. This is not what he is used to. And Harold German is in deep He's trouble. Going to break his leg. He needs to turn around and try to make this a He's fight. He's breaking but his leg. This fight trouble. is over. He's breaking his ankle. He's on his knee now. He's got a knee lock. Harold just doesn't know what to do. Well, he hasn't been in this situation before. He's trying to turn it around. Struggling to survive. See that Sambo everything. guy? He lived through that. That was pretty amazing. That was a pretty nice move there. Harold German is still here, but he is taking a panic. This is like on the street. This is not a fight now. He can't put his gloves up, and he has a long way to go. It could He's be tapping out any second. He's tapping out. Yes. He quit. And appropriately so. You know, it's a blitzkrieg type of an attack, John. Harold German, the first kick really got to him. He you know, needed to establish this as a fight right away, and he could not. Igor Zinoviev with a hopping sidekick and most, like, just completely freaked me out. Well, he knew he was coming in against the boxer, too, so I think he changed some of his usual strategy. He told me this week, adjust to the situation. He adjusted to the reputation of Harold German. Hey, I've seen Trevor Bowman in this competition get blasted. Harold German here going through paces and they're asking him where he is and go up and down and through that. Now, Harold German has sparred with Aaron Davis. He's done well from a boxing standpoint. The key is that the boxer has to impose that style in this fight and it must be done quickly. He was unable to do that and so Harold German becomes uh, in this sense a casualty of this style. Well, the next one up is going to be Tom Glenville, a heavyweight, 6-0 and and Gary Myers 150 and one, but don't let the records deceive you as far as that stuff goes. 245 pounds coming in for Glenville, 220 for Myers. They will come in there, the 200 and over category, just like boxing heavyweights coming in here. And Tom Glenville, very interesting in the sense that he says you cannot panic and not overextend yourself, realizing, John, that there's a possibility that you can come in here and be a victim of nerves. Oh. You have to really, really struggle to sleep against that. Well, that's what he will try to maintain in here. The 30-year-old, as we said, 6-0, 245 pounds, 1992 World Kickboxing Association champion. He talks with us. Uh, I just started uh, doing ground fighting, JSEC Jiu-Jitsu, and I've See, that's more effective. I've seen the kickboxing is, you know, very seldom you get you get to land any shots. It's been proven in, in all these type fights. So now I want to see how what I've learned and everything will do. In this event. Ladies and gentlemen, in the heavyweight division, please welcome from Las Vegas, Nevada, Tom. Well, Tom Glanville makes the appearance in here, and obviously somebody who has done his homework, John, knowing that you have to switch to the ground fighting to be successful here. This boy's a specimen, too. He's known to be a great, great leg kicker. I've wrestled with him. We went 20 minutes. He is tough as nails. But Gary Myers, that's another story. Now we'll see what Gary Myers will bring in here. Six-time gold medalist in Greco-Roman World Championships. So wrestling is his forte, and he will probably be very happy to see this become a ground fighting exhibition. Let's take a look at him. And 
his opponent entering now from Muncie, Indiana, Gary Myers. He looks mean enough. He's coming in here. Watch, watch Glanville staring like that, at him already. Gary Myers at 150 and one is awesome. He's a juggernaut. A little psych out job as he tries to win it right there with the stare. Well, you know, it's all about sometimes playing with your opponent's head because you want to get that first move in. Gary Myers is getting that first move in. He's coming. This shakes up to be a good one. Let's hear from Scott Bollinger. Association Super Heavyweight Champion of the World with a no rules fight record of 6 and 0. He is 30 years old, standing 6 feet 2 inches tall, and weighing in tonight at 245 pounds, Tom Glanville. And on my left, from Muncie, Indiana. Six-time gold medalist in Greco-Roman world competition with a record of 150 and one. He is 30 years old, standing five feet eight inches tall, weighing in tonight at 220 pounds, Gary the Iron Bear Myers. Well, we're set to go now. You wonder if Glanville might try some kicking here and try to make it as least wrestling as possible because he knows that will be forced on him. He's noted for the big right leg. And there it is. <laughs> I think he heard you on cue. And he's going to do it again. Side. This is what he should do, John. He's got the that big side tackle, to the Greco-Roman tackle. And Glanville gets guard on his opponent. Glanville Glanville trying for an arm bar. Now, when he's on the bottom, this is guard. Guard is a good thing from the bottom, John. Absolutely. He's winning from the bottom right now. And he's very, trying, that's very rare to see, but he's doing it. He's trying to get a triangle on his opponent. Well, this is one of the most interesting aspects of the competition. When you're on the bottom, looking at the guard position like that, with your legs wrapped around your opponent, you're in control, though you're on the bottom. It's not the conventional way to go. He doesn't quite have the triangle tight enough, but he is definitely in a dominant position. How much time do you let this experiment go on, John, before you change if you're on the bottom? I think Gary, oh, you keep it until you get it, but Gary's gonna go around him. I see the legs opening a little bit. This is Gary's game right here. Now he's starting to pound. Gary's him. out. Nice this, escape. Now this is Gary's game right here. He has made the change because Glanville could not convert from now, the guard position. Yeah, this is uh, Gary's territory all from here. This is not Tom's territory. Well, for the first time tonight, we've seen a reversal in position, and now Glanville is in deep trouble. He's choking him with his elbow. He might be close to ending this, John. No, not yet, but he's, because he's got the whole other side of his neck to breathe blood through. But he is choking him with his elbow. He's trying to get guard on him. You see him, his leg coming around. He's Lando still trying to get guard, guard on him. He can push him away and get him off his neck. A good look at a very gutsy Tom Glanville. Yeah, he's starting to lose consciousness, and uh, he's out as soon as as soon as that other end gets cut off. You can see he's just suffering here. Gokor is going to stop it in a second. Oh, he's, he's got a little break. He was able to turn there. Yeah, he's got a little break. He was close to being all over, but he needs to change his turn it around or he's just going to take a pounding here. Takes a shot in the head. John, do you think Glenville could even hear his corner here? Absolutely not. Glenville's in his own private Idaho right now. Uh, he's he's uh, tapping. He that's it. He's tapping. And Myers almost did more damage to himself rolling across the ring. And our doctors are in the ring. And Tom is fine. Well, he made a valiant effort. Valiant effort and just could not make the turnaround as the elbow to the neck 
immediately establishing the fight after Glanville had the ability in the beginning Tom's to gonna take be control fine. of this fight. Tom's going to be fine. But what is happening here, John? What are they doing? Just bringing oxygen in. I don't think there's any need for it. But, uh, you know, our medical people are the best. You have to be right on top of the situation, too. They're just testing him right now. And he does move the legs, all these very positive signs. And you notice that within seconds of the fight being over, medical attention on hand and swarms of it. And you just got a little bit of blood loss there, Gore. And you got a little bit of a... He's got a little ding on the, above his left eye, if you notice. Probably from the headbutt. The headbutt was the finale issued there by Myers. And this is certainly... Not a sport for the faint of heart. Now they're, he's sitting there talking. This is a situation where you get chances to finish the fight and you have to take them. Yeah, Tommy's fine. You know, I mean, you can see here that, you know, he's talking. He's fine. But what was interesting, John, from the guard position, which can be an offensive position from the bottom, Glanville was doing fine for a while and was unable to make it entirely his advantage that way. And Gary Myers able to punch and get away. He punched the leg and moved that, then got on top. And I guess that's the one disadvantage from the guard position that if you don't convert it right away, the other guy's immediately on top of you. That's how it goes there as Tom Glanville's been escorted out and Gary the Iron Bear Myers will advance to future competition. And there you see the mark of a warrior. He's a tough, tough kickboxer. He's been through this kind of thing before. He just got tired down there. He couldn't reclaim the guard, and he just got tired. A couple of minutes was all it took, and you make a good point. You cannot reclaim the guard, the guard position. It's a risky offensive maneuver from the bottom. And if it doesn't quite succeed, you instantly become vulnerable, especially to Gary the Iron Bear Myers, who was merciless in there tonight. Well, the exclamation point was the headbutt. Now, everything else has been tried by Gary the Iron Bear. He knows that Glenville is fading here, and that's what he does here. You can see his right hand tapping, and Gokar yes. saw it immediately. And that is what finally did it, was the headbutting from that position. And he had the leverage, he had the position. You talked in the beginning of the show about position, and Gary Myers, of everybody, maybe displayed it the best. Oh, yeah. I mean, Gary Myers had that little half mount, and he was quite content not to mount fully because he just knew that he couldn't reclaim the guard on him. Once that left leg cannot get through that crotch area to get between you, then the choke cannot be pushed away. All right, then it's a matter of time, and for survival, the fighter has to tap out, and Myers is waiting for it. it. Hasn't happened yet. Takes matters into his own hands, and then he takes matters into his own head. Dominating position, dominating position. And that was, that's what we're going to see in our next fight, too. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Penthouse Centerfold, June 1995, Elizabeth Hilden. Elizabeth Hilden making the rounds here, and you see some of the pageantry that lends to the competition. A realm all their own, the Battle Cave Girls, so to speak. And this is part of the competition here. He even got the referee a little distracted just then. And my, he wasn't in any mood to call any fights off at that moment. And now the guru of this competition, Mario Sperry, 272 and 0, and Rudyard Moncayo, only 7 and 0, but of course in different competitions, the middleweight 160 to 199. That will be the fourth fight of the evening. Well, Mario Sperry has been compared by John Peretti to the Mike Tyson of this competition. Let's take a look. came to Battle Caves to defend my honor, 
the name of my country and the name of Jiu Jitsu family. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, Mario Berry. And there is Mario Sperry. I can't say enough about this boy. I'm telling you, this boy has the hottest record in jiu-jitsu history. He's called the Zen Machine. Well, if other people here have come up with knockouts and submissions in two minutes, maybe he's got something to shoot for here. And you know, years go by, people like him don't lose. That just builds upon itself. And if you're fighting him, what do you have to think? And Papa giving him the little pat on the back. That's Carlson Gracie Sr. And he was the greatest fighter in Gracie history. Which is uh, its own version of history in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu and martial arts. So he's 6'2, 199 pounds, and he'll be fighting Rudyard Moncayo. Moncayo from Ecuador, South America. Says it's all up here, meaning the mind. You have to stay focused and don't let the nerves get to you. He enjoys the one-on-one -on -one competition. So, let's take a look at Rudyard Moncayo, who has told us you cannot let the extraneous factors get to you. A look at Rudyard Moncayo. I just want to test my skills, uh, see how I do against these other people, and hopefully I'll be okay. And his opponent, entering the ring now, from Ecuador, South America, Rudyard Montayo. Well, will the smoke clear for Rudyard Montayo as he makes his entrance coming in here to fight the legend in this competition. A contact champion, all types of background, 7-0 in no rules competition. 26 years old, John, and he has a mountain to climb here. Well, he is a Kempo Karate specialist, but he also wrestles, and he's got a 7-0 record. Six by knockout, he's got a very big right hand. Whether you can utilize it against the Prince over here, it's amazing. How would you tell him to fight Mario Sparrow? I would be the aggressor as long as you could. Because as you see, look what happens when you're the aggressor with skills. Really does make quite an impact in the fight. Well, let's get the introductions now. On my right, from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, esteemed member of the Carlson Gracie Jiu Jitsu team, the 1995 Brazilian Jiu Jitsu champion, Undefeated with an unprecedented record of 272 and 0. A reputation of winning in under two minutes. He is 27 years old, standing 6 feet 2 inches tall, weighing in tonight at 199 pounds. Mario, the Zen Machine, Sperry. From Ecuador, South America, the 1995 Todo Dale Full Contact Champion. With a background in Kempo Karate, this no rules fighter has a record of 7 0, 6 by knockout. He is 26 years old, standing 5 feet 10 inches tall, weighing in tonight at 191 pounds, Rudyard Moncayo. Well, Rudyard Moncayo and the Zen Machine, Mario Sperry, ready to do it here. You know, if you're Moncayo, John, and you've been watching some of the early competition here, maybe it adjusts your game plan. Well, I don't think it can adjust your game plan. The Gracies fight in the same way all the time. Look at that corner, Carlson Gracie Sr., Victor Gracie. There's uh, Marcello Silva, um, uh, Silviera. I mean, you got everybody over there. Are you fighting the legendary Mystique as well, do you feel, when you go against these guys? Yes, you are. You're fighting all of the history and all the camaraderie. And he even bowed to him. That's an unprecedented act in Battle Kid history. That yeah, sends a shock signal. Eh? 
Uh, the Zen Look man is in his element here, yes. Look, he's strolling across the ring for a little sidekick to the knee, maybe. Well, and if you're Kaya, you should go for it right away. And don't trap yourself in the cage areas here. See him just reaching. This is all nonsense. So they can distract him to get the tackle. Well, Might he's even looking. throw a little side kick. Let's see. And there's a little roundhouse kick. And there's the tackle. Well, John, right about it again. And now Sperry will try to do it with good strength. There is a nice well, leg lock. And down he is. And, and that's a mini. He might be in for a short night here. This fight is over because of position alone. He's in the dreaded mount, and uh, Moncayo is trying to just keep alive at this point. And now he can use Moncayo's energy against him. Now Mario just relaxes. Look, Carlson Gracie Sr. just saying, relax, relax. Whenever you want, position. do it. Whenever you want, do it. Just keep the position, you know, don't lose the position. That's all they talk about. You also lose strength as you try to battle up from the bottom, and it just works against you. Sure, and he's got that Labellian double grapes going there, and, uh, you know, this guy is walking him to the center of the ring so that he has time to finish him and doesn't get caught up in the ring. What was that, the Labellian double? Yeah, Gene Labelle, Labellian double grapevines. That's what I thought it was. <laughs> He's on top now, and Sperry... Watch what's happening now, not Mario's only lifting up. Not just in control, but cruise control, whenever he wants. Breaking the arm. He's got the arm in a little, little bit... Twisted up and there. going against the joint. This four elbow lock. This inflicts the most pain here. Oh, Moncayo got out of the first one. Let's see if he got out of the second one. Oh, give him credit for getting out of one. Now it's very bad. The position is very ugly. Oh, he let go of it to keep position. A little right hand for distraction. Is he toying with Moncayo here? He's not toying with him. He's just so comfortable in this position. He's going to push it across and try to release the back of the neck. Well, he's over his average here. <laughs> Good point. That's what I call competition. Goes for the same arm. He tries to chew it up a little bit more. You see the way he lets off on it, takes it again. He's just weakening the joint. And, and, and plays with your mind. Exactly. Oh, Moncayo, go for an armbar. Moncayo gets the mount, but what the fans don't realize here is that he was going for an armbar. No, but he did do something. He got out of his major dilemma. Watch the way he progresses from that, go right back into the mount. That little hook under the leg got him back to the mound. This is probably the most discouraging aspect when you fight this guy is that you think you're starting to do something. This, this might be over. Very over. Taps out. And look at Mario, the ultimate gentleman. Just stops, helps him up, congratulates him. And people booing Montaya, they wanted to see him in more pain, but what more do they need? Montaya is a warrior, an amazing warrior. But listen to me. I think where we're going now, we're going to Zinoviev versus the Zen Machine. That is quite a tantalizing Maybe matchup. the greatest 199-pound fight in history. And you will see it here. Now, that is the ultimate craftsman here. Not only with all the moves, but smooth as silk the way he performed them all. He is the Nuriev of the ring. <laughs> Nuriev and Zinoviev. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> And we will have that coming up. Well, that is something that not only does he do the job and get the win here, but displays some of the beauty of the Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Okay, let's take a look at this just so everybody understands. He works the arm, and now he's going for the arm bar, but he couldn't get the leg over. So he goes back to the guard, he puts the hook underneath the leg, you'll see him try to work it, lifts the knee up nice and high, and turns him over. Now, right back into the dreaded mount. Just before that, if you're Moncoyo, do you have a flash of hope that maybe you'll catch him in between? Moncoyo had every chance to counter that move, too. But at this juncture, with the legs locked and the first left, and there's the weight. That did it right there. Okay, what you're seeing again from this angle, Moncoyo tries to move, but he gets distracted by the arm. He tries to dismount him. Mario lets the arm go. He puts a little more pressure on it. Now all he's thinking about is the arm. When that arm pushes up like that, all Mario's saying is, okay, give me the arm. You see the pivot occurring? He's trying for the leg over, but he doesn't make it because Moncoyo's so strong. So Moncoyo tries to get to the little judo keskitami position. He gets guard on him again. He starts to roll him over. He's looking for the left leg. He flips him over. He drives. He goes into the half mount, almost side control. And you watch. He's waiting to throw the right leg over. 
And he waits and he waits until he feels no pressure. He distracts him again <laughs> and mounts him like a little pony. Oh, he went way up with that and made it quite obvious and just comes in there. And what we're seeing with is extreme balance with these guys. And maybe that might be the most beautiful characteristic of the whole way they do it. The most beautiful characteristic of it is they don't have to hurt anybody because they have dominant position always. And there are the shots coming into the head. And this is why you have to stop it here too now because there is no defense. The arm is out of play and the guy just does business as usual and doesn't do any more than is necessary. Not even a change of expression for the Zen machine. We've got much more coming up. Our fifth fight of the evening. It's going to figure Conan. Conan, Marcus Silveria, 26 and 0, and Victor Tatarkin, 46 and 3. Looking forward to this one, John. I have no um, hope for the audience out there. They have never seen anything like this before. Marcus Silveira is a bad big boy. He's 247 pounds, 30 years old and he's the 1994 undefeated Jiu-Jitsu champion. And he'll be facing the target, who comes in with impressive credentials as well. The heavyweight division, 200 pounds and over. We'll see if these big boys are nimble as well as strong. Conan comes in here, 30 years old, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu champion. He's from the Gracie School. We take another look at him. Everybody know, I think then, uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, Gracie Jiu-Jitsu, Carson Grace Team Jiu-Jitsu is ready to prove then one more time that, you know, you, you have the best style. You know, no, no, don't put nobody down, nobody, I believe in every style you got something, then you can, uh, you can, it'd be, it'd be good for you. But I believe that in a hundred percent, then the Jiu-Jitsu is the best. Get ready for this guy. When that takes that shirt off, you're gonna see some amazing tattoos. He's got a steel hinge tattooed on his elbow. Well, to show that you can't get an arm bar on him. Will he be Conan the Barbarian? We will see. He would pick the right competition to be Barbarian. Marcus Conan Silvera. He's got his own school in Miami, Florida that uh, Carlson Gracie Sr. actually awarded him. Well. I think that puts some more pressure on guys like this who are also looked at in the industry as teachers. They have to do well here. Oh, yeah. I've trained at his school, and uh, he just lays on the ground, opens his legs, and says, okay, you will pass the guard, and just laughs. Well, you don't want anybody saying he didn't do well in extreme fighting. He fights Victor Tatarkin in this competition tonight. Tatarkin, 46-3. 34 years old, 5'11", 207 pounds. He likes Sambo. We'll see if it figures in here tonight. Oh, I like it. It's, uh, maybe they're like the same fight in Sambo and wrestling. In uh, uh, the fight. I like it. And his opponent coming to the ring now from Moscow, Russia, Victor Tartarkin. And there is Victor Tartarkin making his way in here. Now he might look small, but he's a sweeper and he's a player of judo like you've never seen. And he's a very mild-mannered guy, too, so I think that makes somebody look even smaller when they come up with that type of an impression, but you can sense the fire burning within. Oh, yeah, this guy's great. He's well-schooled. He's a heavyweight champion in judo. And he's up against, you know, somebody that he understands what he's up against. Well, he's against the Brazilian. Is he an automatic underdog, or is this more or less an even matchup in your mind? 
it's an even matchup in terms of the skills of the individual sports. Whether one sport has an advantage over the other, well, that's yet to be proved. Talk a little bit about Samba. We haven't seen much of it here. Just like Igor Zinoviev in our past fight tried to get the ankle crank, these boys love to break legs. <laughs> they Just specialize break legs. in breaking legs. Or the threat of breaking legs, forcing the submission. And there you are looking at the smile. We're ready for introductions now. On my right, from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, member of the Carlson Gracie team, awarded his own Carlson Gracie School in Miami, Florida, a 1994 Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu champion with an undefeated record of 26-0. He is 30 years old, standing 6 feet 1 inches tall, Weighing in tonight at 247 pounds, Marcus Conan Silveira. And on my left, from Moscow, Russia, ex-Russian Sambo champion, current Empire State Games heavyweight judo champion, with a record of 46 and three, he is 34 years old. Standing 5 feet 11 inches tall, and weighing in tonight at 207 pounds, Victor Tartarkin! Well, Tartarkin gives away 40 pounds and about four tattoos. <laughs> yes, he does, and some interesting ones at that. You don't know which is worse, but the 40 pounds, uh, a big mountain to climb for him here tonight, balance, and look at the top of the way that uh, Conan is built. He looks sculpted here. I would look for that to be a major factor. Same little game, same little game. Oh, and a leg kick. Show it anyway, right? Just trying to get the leg distraction for the tackle. That's all, and trying to get the tackle. And Tark Tarkin knows where he's going. Well, Tark Tarkin's much faster, too, than we thought. He will need to utilize that speed, because once he gets caught in the vice grip of Conan, it will be trouble. Tartakin's no joke here. He's really, really got power, and he's tried to throw him. He turned his back, though. That's deadly. And here come the hooks. Well, he got thrown into that throwing the back Let's position. Let's see if the hooks get in. Tartakin working. He knows not to. Then there's the hooks. This is going to be a very short fight now. And Tartakin had a chance, but he's in bad shape, and the neck can be cranked here. Big elbow to the back of the neck. He turns his back, and that's Oh, smart move. He rolls right over. And he's got to be very careful These with the arms. These are tough shots to the head now because this is to the temple area. But he's area trying to get fist. out of the mount, which is the most important thing. He's going to turn over. When you're in the bottom, you have to keep turning. Again, the rear naked starting to get employed. Oh, and the hooks. Is, this is getting gross, and those tattoos are looking at you. He'll be, he'll be unconscious if it's not stopped because he's going to start putting them in. Uh, this is... See how, see how calm they are now? This will have to be stopped. Trying to stand up. Talking. Very smart move. Very smart move for Tarkin. Trying to stand up. But he's got right away. He tried for the throw. It didn't happen. No, no. He's actually, he's actually made a maneuver on the elbow now. He's in much better position. He's sliding out the back. This boy knows what he's doing. Well, the hooks are back in again. Give him and a he's fight. on his back. Give him a fight in which he's not giving away 40 pounds. Two hooks and he's not, and he's on his back. Let's see if he'll, he'll go to the mount, and he does. Well, and back to the back again. How much of this can Tarkin sustain? He's made some nice moves here, but can't get quite out of trouble here. Yeah, Tarkin is doing the right thing. In fact, he's doing better than anyone's done against this position. Notice how he tries to block some of the shots to the head, even though he can't see them. He has a big elbow to the Big punches. Look, Tarkin's got presence of mind. Now he's in deep trouble. Now he's in total trouble. The elbows are turned. Yeah. His defenses have been compromised. And the Bulldogs are attacking. And these are hammers coming in at him here. And it's one thing to take a punch, John, standing up. But with somebody right over you and wailing with everything, this is it. Throwing in the towel. He was, and that's a good move by the corner because he was trying to tap out, but the arms wouldn't do it for him. Right. But you see Igor Zinoviev throw in the towel, kind of disgusted, and a little mouse under his right eye. It looks like a little cut, too. When Kotarkin was trying to submit, his elbows were locked, so he couldn't do it. The corner saw that and did the right thing. 
Marcus Silviera with a big hug, and I mean a big hug. And Tatarkin showed a lot in a short time. He was a great fighter. He made great counters, and he almost stood up. And that is where the 207 pounds against 247 made all the difference. He almost stood up. The 40 pounds got him. The point I made in the beginning about Conan's upper body strength at that point came in big. Very, very true. Also, technically, they go right to the back, and the judo guys turn over and turtle up. If you turtle up with a big boy on your back, you're going to get rolled around. But Tarkin, you know, he's no joke. He really understands where he was going the whole time. He had presence of mind. And you don't figure you could say that in most fights that would last two and a half minutes, that things happen. Now, Tarkin was in early trouble and came very close to escaping it. No, he, he wasn't escape. far away as far as turning the fight entirely and getting out of it completely. Here he's taking shots, but John, he would stand up. At, at this point in time, you know, I thought he was really in trouble. He had the hooks in him, but he raises his lower body up, he starts to stand up, and he dumps Marcus's huge weight forward. Marcus is actually holding himself up here, and, and Tarkin's getting the arm and ready for a throw. Marcus's right leg oh. does keep him just barely in there, and a nice maneuver on top oh, by the, the hooks, Conan. The hooks are dominant, but Tar Tarkin with total presence of mind here, is trying to actually get away from these hooks. Look at the arms blocking what he doesn't know is coming, but senses is coming. Now, when Conan gets the wraparound, and you'll see that the arms, watch the hand there. He's trying to submit, can't because it's locked. Referee sees it, and towel he, comes in, goodbye. And Zenobia throws in the towel for his countryman. Good move, excellent move. Let's go now to Scott for some more of the penthouse girls. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Penthouse Centerfold, this October 1993, Stacey Moran. And there you see the highlights on Stacey Moran. Talking to the crowd. Must be speechless. Well, we've got another fight coming your way with a Gracie, Carlson Gracie this time, 8-0, and John Lewis, 6-0. They've been matched in the lightweight division, 159 pounds and under. They'll be getting ready to rock here in what is our seventh fight of the night. And of course, we've got championships coming your way from other fights in this way. Well, the Gracie name is Magic. In this business, let's take a look at one more of the Gracies, Carlson Grace. É, meu pai foi o melhor lutador da família e eu vim aqui defender o nome dele. From Rio de Janeiro and the Gracie family, introducing Carlson Gracie Jr. Carlson Gracie as he makes his entrance in here. On his right, Victor Gracie with his hand on his shoulder. Not people don't know much about this guy, but this guy is one of the best. He's a six-time Brazilian Greco-Roma champion. 10-time Brazilian national champ. The Prince of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. 26 years old, 5'7", 158. So very smart. Gets right to the edge of the division limit. Gives himself every chance here. Look at the years on this boy. You think he's been grappling a long time? Woo! And in the typical Gracie tradition, unfazed by everything. Totally single-minded, purposeful, but that, not arrogant. That's what years of a reputation 
will do for you. That's what years of winning, confidence, respect for the art will do for you. Well, he'll be coming in here against John Lewis. Comes off a one minute, 15 second win in the Creation Games in Hawaii. Got a big road in front of him tonight. What I think is so great about this type of fighting is that it's, it's the only art, it's the only kind of sport that really shows different systems together. So you can see what systems really you know, kind of dominate other systems. Ground fighting, stand up versus karate versus boxing. And it's also a real good way to test what you can do as a fighter in general, not just, you know, points or with sport, but you can actually see what you're capable of uh, in a real life situation. And his opponent entering the ring now. Vegas, Nevada, John Lewis. So John Lewis, a man with an appreciation of the different forms of the boxing and the martial arts, makes his way in. Uh, John Lewis can do it all. He used to be a professional dancer. He can box, he can kick, he's got a body. He's about it down at 4% body fat. He weighed in at 159, I think, right on the dot. And somebody who appreciates the value of the tattoos. Let's get the introductions now. On my right, from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, the prince of Brazilian jiu-jitsu, the son of Carlson Gracie, with a record undefeated of 8-0, 10 time Brazilian national champion, six-time Brazilian Greco-Roman champion. He is 26 years old, standing five feet, seven inches tall, weighing in tonight at 158 pounds, introducing Carlson Gracie Jr. <laughs> On my left, from Las Vegas, Nevada, Coming off a one minute, 15 second win in the 1995 Pan Creation Games in Hawaii. One of four black belts worldwide from master grappler Jean LaBelle, founder of JSEC Jiu Jitsu. He has a record of 6 0. He is 27 years old, standing 5 feet 11 inches tall, weighing in tonight at 158 pounds. John Lewis. Both very similar, 158 pounds. And, and John, this is our closest matchup in terms of weight in this competition. This is an amazing match. Uh, I might say so myself. Um, <laughs> but uh, they have to cut that tape down. It's gotten too high on John's hands. Uh, Carlson Gracie Sr. complained about it. And when the Gracies complain about something, you know, they, they don't want to win for the wrong reason. I don't think Lewis wants to win for the long re wrong reason either. No, he's cutting some off, uh, taping it up and making it a little strong. It doesn't look like they put an abundance of extra tape there. He just, just a got little a little bit. carried away, and, uh, and, and that's fine. Uh, he can tape the wrist. The wrists are fine. So he gets the one extra wrap and the handy work done in there by the referee who has to do a little bit of everything. Well, oh, he's a skilled guy, you know. And we're set for the action now. Lewis and Gracie. Gracie in the maroon trunks and Lewis in the black. And this should be interesting to see how guys at the same weight will perform. And These guys can go. And the leg kicks are underway. This is going to go to the ground very, very quickly. Both these guys are very confident on the ground. See John Lewis sidestep there. That was very sweet. They want to make sure that they can get the right situation on the ground. Do it on their terms. And there's the tackle. John Lewis got up again. That's probably the first time that's happened. And he rolled him almost. Lewis able to neutralize after he oh, was Lewis tackled. Lewis got an extremely good guard. Look at this. And a nice little shot to the face. And we're, we're seeing some of the quickness you expect from the lighter weights now. Look at Lewis pound to the head from the guard. Earlier we saw Tom Glenville try to win from the guard 
He could not. This is a whole Curtis different is in a animal. better situation here, a much better guard. He's got the control. Yeah, he's got the control, but, you know, Carlson Gracie, you know, is calming down now. You can see it. Oh, it's very dangerous to punch, to punch the head with, with an open hand, uh, just like that. Lewis trying to keep the guard, keep him away from him. See that? And he got slapped. Big right hand. Oh, but he tried to get the mouth. Lewis gets away again. Lewis goes down. We're seeing this is a, an amazing fight. We're seeing our best technical execution of the entire night. Oh, Gracie's on the back where they want to be. And uh, and John Lewis just playing the game. And taunting him. Look at this. Yes, he is. He's being dominant. Now, don't forget, Carlson's in a dominant position. You know? Carlson looks calm. Lewis trying to work on his head. Two minutes and 28 seconds is our Whoa, Whoa, nice team. move around the outside for John Lewis. Let's see what's gonna happen here. He's trying to get a knee lock on him. John Lewis, very strong for his size. Pretty amazing counter. John going up and around. See the legs always between them. That's the use of the guard. Carlson knows what he's doing. Big right hand lands from the outside. And Lewis trying to take away that guard position of Grayson by landing from the outside and showing total respect there. He's up. He does not want to have John with a big right. stop to the face. Oh, he almost got mounted though. You gotta be very careful now. He's getting suckered into the game. Yes. So is Gracie getting Gracie. Lewis into his game? Yes, here? absolutely. He's got ready for a double. It's not that John doesn't know what he's doing, though. You know, a couple of little elbows, or just taps. He doesn't care. Father's talking to him. You see that? We have our longest trying to turn his head of the night, as these guys have done a lot here. Oh, oh, he almost went behind him. And be very careful you don't go behind him. See him hold the fence. And we're seeing strategies and counter strategies here. This we're seeing strategies fight. that have been broken. This is such a great fight, I'm stepping on your words. We're seeing people that have had to regroup and try different plans of attack, and they know what to do. Now you see them calming down. They're both regrouping. John Lewis complaining about his mouthpiece. He wanted to throw it away. Oh, you see Carlson trying to go behind John Lewis there. He tried hard to do that. Lewis did not let it happen. Knew it was exactly very close. What was going on? It was very close. But Gracie will try this again and again, and the thought being that one of these times it will work. It's our longest fight so far. Yeah, by a minute. This is a technical, technical fight. And this is what happens with guys at the same weight, same quickness, identical skills, and both extremely skilled in the moves and counter moves of this profession. Nice try for the headbutt. John Lewis with two little uppercuts, just trying to stop him from going behind. This is a very technical fight. Wonder where Carlson will make his next move to get behind him. Is there enough room for him here to do something yeah. with Lewis trap? He's trying to go under the leg. You see the left leg of Lewis stopping him from rotating around to his right. But that's all he has to beat is that right leg. Lewis is an incredibly strong person. And he is showing it here. Oh, oh, nice knee try. Oh, John gets suckered into the right hand. That was a very, very bad move. But he turns and gets straightened out again. But yeah, he got suckered into throwing the punch and he went under him. It's almost like we started over again here as we approach the five minute mark. Well, this fight's gonna go a lot longer than that. This fight will yeah. go to overtime probably. You gotta be careful of the knees of Carlson Gracie from this position. He was trying to get his wind. You can see he's having a tough time breathing already. Whoa, he tried to make the move again to go behind. And Lewis utilizing the top of the cage here. It's the first time we've totally seen that. Totally allowed to do that. Absolutely allowed to do that. We haven't seen it as a strategy up till now, but there's a guy that knows everything and how to do it here. Look at the muscularity on Mr. Lewis. Now, is Gracie centering his weight properly here? Yes, very properly. He's trying to go behind. He's already got his head behind. Mm -hmm. It's only the arm that holds him. He's trying to step on his toes to keep his to keep his mouth. Now, what is Lewis waiting for here? No, Lewis is, is just trying to get his win and keep position. Now, you watch Gracie try to break his toes. John Lewis is going to get tired doing that. No, no, there's no problems here. But, but we have to see the way Carlson, you know, is trying to dig a little hole behind. You're looking at the greatest Brazilian here. 
John Lewis is doing an amazing job. He's proving himself already. Well, he's been able to neutralize certain moves by the Gracie up to the six minute mark of this contest here. Sometimes there's just no need to talk. Trying to take down again. Well, they're plotting their strategies here, and now Lewis is out. Is he all the way out? No, he's not. He's in exactly the same position because Carlson wants him in that position. I'm surprised we have seen very little on the ground in this fight. Yeah, John Lewis has to keep his left hand down because he's going to try to go under his arm. And a good look at Gracie. Looks like Lewis better start picking it up in a minute. Oh, he's going to go to guard. That would be a big mistake. From the stand-up to guard would be a very big mistake from this point. He's watching that head. He throws a couple of right hands in, but he really wants to do something with that head. But he knows if he uses his left hand, Carson will go behind. Oh, he's trying to pound the back there now. Oh, big headbutt, and he's just so aware. You see that? Yes. Shifts over, doesn't let the head hit him. Halfway through the scheduled bout, we've reached the milestone as the fighters are trying to get it together here. Now you hear the you hear the Carlson Gracie team talking to him, trying to oh, little groin attack. Lewis gonna make a move here. Oh, nice, nice headbutt. Try by Gracie. Great headbutt. John's nice and calm though. Oh, Carlson is really trying to get behind this boy. He knows he has to get behind him. He can't take his foot off the ground or he'll lose base. Right. Ooh, beautiful headbutt. Just grazing. Lewis trying to do it from a defensive posture here. Tough way to Just fight. Just kind of looking at him. He knows where he wants to go. He's keeping the hook on. And he has made it as we approach nine minutes here. Nice headbutt. The headbutt seems to be the best tactical weapon for Carlson now. Oh, oh, oh. He's got an arm under. He could get behind now. Now, if we get to the five minute mark as we start to think about overtime, is Lewis playing for overtime now? Absolutely not. Lewis is trying to stop the progression of Carlson Gracie to behind him. So he'll try to do that here. See, see the way he's burrowing under his arm? He wants the back. He oh, big bang on the foot. When you see uh, John Lewis move like that, uh, you know that he knows where he's got to go. Carlson just trying to burrow under. John Lewis, two big right hands, one off the ear. That ear's been punched before. That's no problem. John Lewis with a single leg grape to hold the man in position and a nice piece of fence. Now remember, when we get down to four minutes and 51 now, we will go to overtime. They will separate these fighters, and we will start again for five minutes. This is the World Championship Battlecade Extreme Fighting. Carlson Gracie with a move. He's got John's base off the ground. Very dangerous. John tries a cross face lock and reclaims his guard. Tries to break his leg again. Nothing is happening on the toes. Another right hand from John. He wins that time. Four minutes and 22 seconds. What a terrific strategy fight from two amazing athletes.
the king of Brazil, and probably the king of Las Vegas. He's trying to torque his, his uh, neck a little bit more. Look at that position, look at that position. Just so, so intent on getting behind him. Two guys in one position, holding it for this long, and we know all about that. It's hard to hold things, especially heads, especially, especially arms. Dave, I can't explain to you the exhaustion of these guys right now. They are at muscul muscular fatigue levels that, that, you know, you and I don't see. No, they have really been going at it, and basically, a grudge match of attrition here. You look at the feet stepping on the toes. Gracie trying to get a different position here as we approach overtime. Now, what is each guy trying to do here, John? This, this hasn't changed the strategy. John working for distraction and position. Carlson Gracie trying to get the back. He is up with Ben's adventure. Oh, great move. Tries to make a takedown. Carlson failed on that move. Somebody had to gamble. John has to watch his arms now. Carlson is... Trying to get away, he's trying to break his leg. Is there enough time still? Oh, beautiful counter, John Lewis. And Lewis pulling Gracie trying closer to break the here. Knee. He's going to throw a left hand, I think. Some of the most pulls out. Oh, ankles in jeopardy. Ankles in jeopardy. He pushes it down. His ankle, his knee is in jeopardy. Too. Oh, John missed. Lewis with a tactical move off the fence. He we haven't seen feet. that in extreme fighting. Back again. The crowd does not like that. They realize that Lewis had a chance for the finish. No. Carlson was actually working very hard there to finish John. That's why he gave up the fence. Now, after that, when Lewis took a shot, was trying for it, Payne thought he was in a good position. Did not work out for him then. No, it did not. But, two minutes to go here now as they wind down. 159, you're right. As I glance at the clock, we still have that burrowing Gracie. Well, this has certainly been the most intriguing and fascinating matchup as far as moves, counter moves, what each guy does to try to negate the other. You get the feeling these guys looked at at films of each other before they went at it because they knew their opponent. Yeah, I don't think they have actually, but you know, don't forget who we're looking at in here. We're looking at an extreme underdog of John Lewis against the 10-time Brazilian national champion. And a match that has developed as advertised. Beautiful headbutt. Boy, Carson can use his head, can he? Ooh, he did. In more ways than one. Carson is preparing to make a strategy move again, and he doesn't know that there's only one minute left, though. And it's hard to get a sense. People may be screaming that to him in the corner if they had any idea. Hard to get a sense of how much time would be left, and now... But his back is to the people who are telling him there's a minute. Right. They're speaking Portuguese. John Lewis doesn't know what the hell they're saying. <laughs> Well, folks, we have seen some short ones. We've seen some bouts under a minute. And the first fight that exceeded two minutes and 28 seconds did so in grandiose fashion as we are flirting with overtime. Let me tell you something. If this bout goes any more difficult for Carlson Gracie, this will be a huge, huge upset for Gracie Jiu-Jitsu. Well, overtime a certainty. We are in overtime. What are the rules here, John? Well, we have five minutes extra for overtime. guys have a one minute rest period now and that's going to go very fast. I, I can't see a clock but I know it's ticking away. And uh, when you're resting that clock always seems to go very fast. Would there be any strategy change in overtime? Both guys know that there's only five minutes left instead of 15. Do they try to open up more? Or do they settle? Do they stay with their game plan and settle for the draw if they have to? No. Neither of the guys are going to settle for a draw. So what happens strategy wise then 
with the five minutes now that they know that the time is almost over. More aggression, more and more aggression, dominance of technique. Would we be apt to see the possibility of gambling a little bit more in overtime? Gotten to the two minute mark now, approximately of rest period. Combatants will clearly take that, and we start the last five. It's a little oversight on the timekeeper's part there. He's all wet, Carlson's all wet. Have to go back with five minutes to go. A little kicking demonstration here. So they go out of here with 4.35 left in overtime. And we believe that first session was about 14 seconds shy of 15 minutes according to the clock, but still quite a bit of action with these two guys. And now right in front of us, they do the same thing that was going on earlier. Now, John, we've got four minutes left. If this thing doesn't end, we have a draw. Yeah, I'm just watching these guys from the back here, and this is a, just a horrifying fight. I mean, Carlson Gracie just trying to go under him. John Lewis just being very strong and stubborn about it. So if this goes all the way, they sell it for a draw, what happens then, John? They split the purse, and uh, they, do, they come back on extreme, you know, fighting two. They would have a score to settle. But a draw for the Carlson Gracie team is unprecedented. Now we're coming close to that now. And again, John, it's worth repeating at times during this long fight what each guy wants to do here. We've talked about it a couple times with three minutes to go. Again, what do you think each guy is looking to do here? And who's doing it better? You know, I can't tell. This is such an amazing stalemate, but the Brazilians seem to be just screaming and imploring him to go behind, I think. They're trying to get him to turn and they're trying to get moved. And John Lewis is trying to get a better strategy and position here. Carlson stomping on the feet again. And Lewis just kind of calm up there. Throwing some nice right hands. Maybe they're taking effect. Saw a little shake that time. It is a little surprising to see fighters. John Lewis isn't holding the, the, the ring anymore. Could be, could be a move for Carlson Gracie. And you know he'll pick up on that immediately. At 223 seconds, you know, it, he, if he lets go of that ring, which he is now, it could be a big problem for him. Now, Carlson is such a great fighter that, you know, he understands exactly where he is all the time. I am a little surprised that neither fighter made a radical change from this after realizing that each one effectively was able to neutralize the other as we have now gone past 18 minutes of this match. You know, I'm, Carlson Gracie is just such a great practitioner here and he's really pushing on John Lewis and he's, he's actually dominating the fight. But with no points and no way to be awarded a victory unless it's the usual route. Gracie is running out of time and is staring at a draw. And that's it. History has been made. Wow. The Carlson Gracie team has stopped. We have a draw. You have been in this business for a long time. You followed the Gracie family. I have How never... monstrous is this? Oh, this is, this is the cataclysmic. I mean, the Gracies just can't believe it. These guys represent themselves. These guys represent themselves you know, in a way that, that is just amazing. And the crowd hamming it up for these guys who basically were able to take 
the strength of the other away to a point at least where we saw endurance now. Some of these matches in the past, John, an hour and a half, you said, in the Brazilian matches, and this had the look of something that could have gone for quite a long time, even more. He's welcome. He's a pro. And now centerfold, Miss September 1993, Andy Sue Irwin. Well, as we said earlier, John, a good time to be speechless. Fans love the girls. Certainly added an element of pageantry here. My God, she's walking around like she's already won this. Gary Myers, 151 and 1. Conan Marcus Silveira. Conan the Barbarian here has uh, had a win, and Gary Myers advanced previously with his victory. So now they get ready to decide heavyweight matters at 200 pounds and over. Well, we've seen Gary Myers, and we've seen and we've seen uh, Marcus Silveira. I think Mar Marcus Silveira, you know, is not as aggressive as Myers, but that Myers will put himself in a, you know, unusually poor position maybe later on in the fight. In terms of condition, I think maybe Silveira Silveira has, uh, you know, like better condition because of his grace in jiu-jitsu, but, you know, it's amazing the way Greco-Roman wrestling, you know, can work against you. Well, Myers, of course, in the fight with Glanville did get off to a start he wasn't particularly pleased about, turned it around immediately and showed an incredible will to finish. Now, as far as the styles here going in, what about the second fight of the night for a guy? The mental preparation, you can't get too high after the first win. No. What you have to understand is that the conditioning of these athletes are different. You know, Myers is a tackler, and uh, Marcus Silveira is a, a go-behind kind of person, you know, and he works out of the guard, he works out of the mount and the side control, and I'm not sure if Myers is going to, you know, savvy that. Because we might have the power, we might have the technique, and that's why it's the final, because we've got two different styles coming together, like the entire theme of the night, so we're getting ready for this heavyweight final. Should be an excellent matchup. Well, now we have two guys who come in here with not only good experience, but with victories tonight. So now they've had their reputations enhanced by their earlier performance. Now they know that this is the one for everything and the idea of staying focused and staying within yourself and not overextending yourself that fighters talk about. We'll see it come into play here. This is the first extreme fighting world championship right now. History being made. Um, we you know we don't know, but who's going to win this? Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Battlegate Extreme Fighting Heavyweight Championship of the World from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Marcus Conan Silveira. Marcus. Conan Silveira now coming in for the final. Well, John, as we come in here for this final, do you think that Silveira is either upset or additionally motivated by what he saw with the Gracie family in the draw? I think it's going to make him fight even harder to please Carlson. I mean, his son went to a draw for the first time in his life. You know, I mean, Marcus really, really is motivated. So he's got a lot on the line here. He would like to turn it all around. Let's get the formal introductions now. And his opponent entering the ring now from Muncie, Indiana, Gary the Iron Bear Myers. Well, Gary the Iron Bear Myers certainly displayed a monstrous finishing ability. And I'll tell you what, this has all the look of any main event you would like to see. There is psych out here, there is intimidation, there is motivation. Let's hear all about it. On my way, from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, member of the Carlson Gracie team, awarded his own Carlson Gracie school in Miami, Florida, the 1994 Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu champion, with an undefeated record of 27-0. He is 30 years old, standing 6 feet 1 inches tall, weighing in tonight at 247 pounds, Marcus 
Conan Silviera. On my left, from Muncie, Indiana, six-time gold medalist in Greco-Roman world competition, with a record of 151 and one, he is 30 years old, standing five feet eight inches tall, weighing in tonight at 220 pounds, Gary the Iron Bear Myers. Well, John, in extreme fighting, it may not get any better than this. Now we're looking at the big boys now. They look ready. They each come off victories. And I think Myers is the, is the aggressor here. Well, they worked for him in his last fight. And we'll see how it happens here. Oh, man, this here. is great. Hold on to your seats. The big right hand's coming in there. And Marcus Severo going right to the guard. See the way they lift them up with the guard legs? He goes to the closed guard. Marcus feels the pressure of this man. That's why he went to the closed guard. Marcus moving himself away from the fence. Trying to get a little bit of room here as we go 30 seconds into this heavyweight championship fight. Marcus Silviera on the bottom in the guard position. See, this and Myers is on top trying to get away from that and work on his game. This is a very bad position for Gary Myers because he doesn't understand the Brazilian guard. No, he does understand pounding from there, and he will try to overpower and muscle his way to a win. And that's the contrast in this fight. Very well put. Um, he's going to annoy Marcus, though. And uh, these Brazilians have a way of getting back. And of course, in his last trying to fight, turn him over. Marcus is trying to turn me over. I'm sorry. Myers was able to get away from a would-be guard thrown by Glanville, so he may not be as bothered by this as he normally would be. Single leg grapevine by Marcus trying to turn him. He's almost got him now. He's oh, Gary Myers with a great base. I mean, a great base. Myers not a good just, base. He a just great saved base. himself there. Myers showing what he's got. The best of Greco-Roman, the Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. This fight is in the trenches, ground fighting. Two guys who have won competitions tonight, advanced to this stage, showing a lot of strategy and a lot of intensity two minutes in. Mark is content to stay on the bottom, trying to get his head off the fence, and he does. Myers tried to land a punch. Uh, 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 to be very careful there. Marcus almost claimed position on him. Marcus trying to push the elbow across. See, he's trying to seduce Gary. Now, he may have seduced him indeed. Myers doesn't seem to have too much tolerance for this position. He likes to punch from there. He's not as much into the wrestling aspect. Well, he, he wants to punch from there, but you've got to watch that right um, the arm. See the way the arm is starting to work. Uh, the referee's got a cut under the arm, eye, and a big cut over the left eye, right they, eye, rather. They stopped the Royer fight for this reason earlier. Oh, please don't How stop bad this is fight. It? Please don't stop this fight. How bad is it? Didn't seem as bad and as deep as the Royer cut it. You would suspect that they should let this go. Doctor tends to bulk him at the same time. It's nothing. I think they'll let this go. Nothing. Both doctors agree. Does the clock stop during this break, Judd? What happens with the clock during this? The clock should be stopped. Well, as expected, the show will go on. Gary slips. He's got that weird bouncy style, doesn't he? He certainly does. A pleasing contrast here. He's trying to uh -oh, make Gary, a wrestling type move, Gary's but Conan is on him. Don't shoot against this guy too easily. You shoot, you better not miss. 
Go for the legs down low, make sure it's connection. The upper body strength of Conan here. Gary Myers going for the shoot again. Uh oh, a little turnover about to happen here. Myers has been here before. Great base on Gary Myers. Did he touch out? I couldn't see from here. Yeah, Someone like he touched out. out. Marcus won. This is over. Tapped out from a guillotine, I believe. I couldn't see from this angle. Immediately, it looked like he did. How quickly it can change. Gary Myers got wrapped up. We talked about that upper arm strength and the guillotine. And there it is. There it is. And there's the belt coming in. And how quickly this ends and what a unique position for it to end. Myers had been given a reprieve. They were starting over. And in extreme fighting, it happens extremely quick. Here is Conan. John, take us through. Well, you see that they're trying to get a turnover here. And he's got the arm connected. He can't get it because Gary's base is just so wonderful. You were talking about that. But you see that. he switches hands, and he starts to work the guillotine. And he's sliding the guillotine here. in, and he's arching his back. And Gary just doesn't know to put guard on him to try to stop that action. And he taps out on the fence. That's why we couldn't see it. And how quickly and amazingly decisive is that quick turn. Oh, it's not just a Conan. choke, it's a crank. At four minutes and 25 seconds, winner and new Battlecade Extreme Fighting Heavyweight World Champion, Marcus Conan Silveira. So Conan gets it done. Marcus Silveira showing you maybe the best individual move of the night as he wins this one standing up. <laughs> but with the stand-up guillotine. So uh, there wasn't much he could do if he didn't understand to put guard in it. Now let's go back now for some more from the ring announcer Scott Berlin. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Penthouse Centerfold, Miss December 1993, Lavina Holmes. Got still ahead the Zen Machine and Igor to finalize their championship bout. Igor is an OVF, 16 0 in the middleweight final here. Mario Sperry, 273 0 after his earlier victory tonight. Well, Igor told us a couple days ago. Who knows what might happen if he fights Sperry? He gets his chance now. Let's go to Gary Spurlin. This is the Battlecade Extreme Fighting Middleweight World Championship. From St. Petersburg, Russia, Igor Zinoviev. And there is Igor Zinoviev. Mild-mannered, down-to-earth guy left a couple days ago talking about the prospect of fighting Mario Sperry. Knew he'd be an underdog, but said, who knows? Oh, he, this guy is tough as nails. I think he's overmatched. But not, no, who knows? Well, if he did find himself overmatched here, he earned the right by virtue of an earlier victory. Look at John Lewis in his corner. John Lewis looks like he can go another 20 minutes with a Gracie. He doesn't have a mark on him. Well, that was certainly the most unique, and the last two fights have been amazing in that regard. The draw over the 20 minutes showing us one thing, and then the guillotine applied by Conan. Well, 
Let's hear about Mario Sperry now. And his opponent entering the ring now from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, Mario Sperry. Well, Mario is 273-0 now, and he was the Cadillac of that first round. He's extremely smooth, John, and again, he looks like he's not faced at all by this tougher assignment now than his first fight. He's the best there is. He knows it. He's the Zen machine. He never shows any emotion at all. Well, now you're Igor. How do you try to get this guy out of his Zen machine status? What do you do to try and upset him at least? You don't throw a sidekick. <laughs> That's for sure. Okay. Just look at, look at Mario's face. I mean, he is just completely composed. Mario's the baddest dude on the planet right now, and Igor has a job for him that no one relishes. Let's go to Scott Berlinger. On my right, from St. Petersburg, Russia, the 1995 Empire State Games Judo Absolute Division Champion. He was the captain of the Russian Judo team. With a kickboxing record of 15-0, he is 28 years old, standing 6 feet 1 inches tall, and weighing in tonight at 187 pounds, Igor Zinoviev. <laughs> On my left, from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, esteemed member of the Carlson Gracie Jiu-Jitsu team, the 1995 Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu Champion. Undefeated with an unprecedented record of 273-0 and a reputation of winning in under two minutes. He is 27 years old, standing six feet two inches tall, weighing in tonight at 199 pounds. He is Mario, the Zen Machine, Sperry. Well, fans, this should be a treat. Last bout of the evening. This is more than a treat. You're watching the two magicians out there. Mario Sperry justified that reputation to anybody who saw him for the first time tonight. Absolutely unflappable in that first victory. And Igor Zinoviev, a lot of heart, a lot of technique. And tough as nails. And he will need it all. Now that he's at that upper echelon of competition, going against Sperry, who has never lost, but was extended past the two-minute mark in his last fight. That was an event by itself. I notice Igor has a new injury, his left knee. And we go now with the final fight. Igor faked that kick that John Freddy said, don't throw. Ooh, big right hand on the come in. This is a very similar pose to what we saw before. Mario Sperry, good balance. Igor tries oh, to take it down to take very bad down. Move. Very bad move. Well, Igor went for it early. He went for it, but, you know. And, and it cost him. Oh, desperately. Um, he's almost got side control on him. Igor's been there before, I'm sure, but not against somebody like this. Now, why do you think he, he made that move right away? Did he figure he had to just do something drastic? He knew he was going behind him. And now... This is where you usually see Mario Sperry right around this time of the fight. This is a very bad position for Eager. And Mario Sperry doesn't let people out of these holes. You see the way he's crawling around yep. his back? It's very dangerous with Zenobia. Sperry with excellent control on top, balance, weight distribution, willing to ride it as long as necessary. Here comes the punches in a second. Big knee. Kick. We saw the big leg come over before, just before he finished the band. Now, Igor tried to, to, to move him out of position. Here come the punches. His hands are starting to free up. See the way he's just squirming to the back? Very bad position. Big, huge knee, too. And the punches are starting. Oh, 
He's got side control now. Now the next position is Mount. And Igor knows it, but... Oh, 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 Igor. Kept him off for a second. Igor tried to go behind him. It was a very technical move. Oh, very bad. Oh, Igor's up. He's up. That's an amazing move. Unbelievable move. Igor is an RV out of it. He raised eyebrows on Mario. The biggest escape tonight. And maybe he did it, John, because he went against the grain of common moves. And he surprised Mario Sperry, so oh, he, he shot Mario again. Sperry. He lets Mario Sperry know he's in a match now. This boy is not going to go down easy, by the way. He's got a huge base. Well, if Mario Sperry can get the same position on Igor, who knows, as Igor said, maybe he'll have to gamble. No, Igor's got guard. guard. No, he doesn't have guard. He's lost a leg now. And there's Health Gracie telling him what to do. Relax, relax. Telling him how to move the leg here, get around. He's telling him to relax and sprawl. All weight distribution. Notice he's in no hurry here. The right move can end a match. Watch Mario Sperry's left leg. It's going to try to advance. That's why Igor... Oh, it's advancing through the middle right there. He gets it up behind Igor's legs. I, I thought I saw a good glimmer shape. of emotion on Mario's face just then. He's trying to get it through the middle. Igor gets full guard. He dominated position. Igor controlling from the bottom for a second. Mario comes after it. And this is fun here. Oh, this is not only a technical fight, this is ultra strength fight. They're telling him to pass the guard, pass the guard, stand up and pass the guard. Nice kick in the face by Igor, and he gets guard again. Oh my god, the Russian is really, really... Uh-oh. Just as I spoke. Well, Sperry was able to go around, and now he's in a very strong position. Oh, huge position. Just like he was before. Oh, he's mounted him. This could be the beginning of the end right well, here. you have to be perfect against Mario Sperry, and this is his second chance to finish here. Uh, Mario's gonna rest now and start to mount his attack. Eager's in a very bad position. Uh, you know, don't forget no one's ever gotten out of this position with Mario Sperry. The legs are up past the top now as he just continues to get weight distribution, position, and will try to use Igor's strength against Igor. Now here come the punches. Igor with a lot of heart. Oh, a lot of heart, and, and in the worst possible position, he's going to get exhausted down there. He actually tried to punch him from the bottom of the mount. Yeah. What option would Igor have? Oh, he just got hit with a very brutal left hand, and he's bleeding above the eye, I think. Yes, he is. Or well, maybe it's below the eye. Mario is just so dominant. Well, Mario Sperry doesn't let people out. What would be the way out for Victor? They have to push it? the knees back and flip and bridge to get him over the top. But, you know, this guy's got a base of 273 wins. Is that all he has to do? He almost did it. He almost did his right. A lot of heart from Igor Zinoviev, who came in here and has really lasted now past the five-minute mark and now, gotten out of two would-be end-of-the-fight situations. I don't think anybody's ever gone 10 minutes with Mario Sperry in history. Well, Igor Zinoviev has known the exact moment when to try and fight back. He is in a tough spot here, but he always tries to punch as he's getting hit and try to move Sperry. But what happens is Sperry just works on you. He's tough as nails. And is virtually unflappable. You get a good look. He's got two cuts on his face. He's trying to pry it, put pressure on his arms, but Igor is so strong. He's going for an armbar. Whoa, he almost made that. Igor Zinoviev has done very well. Oh my God, he reversed the position. Unprecedented activity. No one's ever gotten out of the mount for Mario Sperry. Well, Igor Zinoviev sets history. Igor Houdini's in OVF tonight. Oh my God. A tremendous amount of heart from Igor Zinoviev. And he's just holding the head. A long journey for Zinoviev. He's going to try to bridge him. He's going to try to bridge Mario off. 
Mario's peeling his hands because he senses the bridge. He's bridging him off. Oh, he got full mount. Oh, he did it! Just like I said! He's trying to crank him. He's got Gar. He's got a finishing hold. If Mario doesn't get up, he's got a finishing hold. Igor is an OVF. He reclaims guard. Igor, Igor is actually holding his neck pretty tight. Trying to do what nobody's ever done against Mario Sperry, but in big trouble here. Can you see Mario's face? Yes. He's going to try to bridge again. Igor Zinoviev closing in on the halfway point of this match. You see the grimace. This is all pain, determination, technique, will. Coming together, the crowd on He lets go of the head, he loses the whole thing. He goes getting up again. He got half guard. We're halfway through regulation. The crowd has lurched forward to come in and get a better view. Oh, Igor gets guard again, but he almost got mount. Igor's gotten guard. Mario Sperry has not been impressed, but he has had to work. Mario's very mount hard. again. He got full mount again. He has had that many times. How many times will he go to the well with Mount before he finishes this fight? This is a very bad position, though. He's standing up. And now Sperry doing a lot more quickness with his punches. He knows that he has to take advantage of Mount more than in previous fights. He has to get a bad, bad position now for Igor. He has better before when he had his head. Big right hand, he's turning his back. He can't do that to the Brazilian. Well, he's trying to turn the head not to get hit, but he might turn right into a finishing hold. Oh, absolutely, and well said. Dave, you don't need me anymore. <laughs> I've got it, right? Clearly. Oh, you're the best, though. Well, we are nine minutes in, and here is Sperry trying to get Mount, trying to finish it off, and Igor Zinoviev with tremendous guts has hung in here in a position in which it would be easy for most guys to quit because it's not exciting for you down there. He really has shown tremendous courage and heart here, and Sperry knowing he's being extended here. Sperry with his mouth open, Igor just so tough, but just dominated in position. Uh-oh, it's bad. He's cleaning him now. Well, now Igor... Igor hasn't quit, though. No, he got hit a little bit more than in the past the beginning of this fight. He is hanging on it. We are closing in on 10 minutes against Mario Sperry. That is big news in and of itself. Trying to go to his back. Igor reverses the whole position oh, of Kessig Atami. He has turned it out for these fans. And he's tried to go behind. Sperry is trying to, to slip out and go behind. Igor Zinoviev into his 11th minute with the master of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. But he is behind him. If Igor lets go of that head, Mario Sperry lives behind him. Igor Zinovia is going behind him. He's been better as a defensive fighter here. And it's standing up. Igor is standing up. Do you realize what that means? The jiu-jitsu world is going nuts. Big uppercuts. Igor Zinoviev has put a new definition on the word versatile in this match here. I am speechless. He has extended the master, Mario Sperry. Extreme fighting is the only place you'll ever see a match of this duration and of this just sophistication. Sophistication, a key word there, John, because we have seen intensity, power, and chess. Look at the position Mario's trying to achieve. Uh, went behind him again. But Sonovia's base is incredible. And so Mario goes to the punching in an uppercut. Huge punching. And we look at X's and O's. Let's not forget the fatigue factor. Oh, Igor, incredible reversal. An incredible reversal. Igor felt him do it. 
He got good finishes from this position. Houdini Zenobia. He got a cut. Mario is cut. What will the best? This is the most there. unbelievable fight. It's a huge cut over the top of his eyes. They could stop it for that. This could be the fight. This could be the fight. He stopped the fight. We have an undisputed heavy middleweight champion of the world. It's pandemonium. You said before this competition started, John, if Mario Sperry ever lost, it would be cataclysmic, it would be Tyson and Douglas in the martial arts Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu world, and it has happened. Igor Zinovia, the toughest man on earth. Look at him. That's why you have to fight these battles. They can't be done on paper, and I think what he did with his escaping and his sense of timing was incredible. Here is Igor, the man who said, who knows, a couple of days ago. Well, now we know that he beat Mario Sperry, who was 273-0. and 0, standing Watch up. this move. Mario makes the amazing jump. Igor feels what? him do it, comes around behind, and knees him right in the face. What a risk. What a risk to your neck. He turned inside against the body movement, and Igor knew when to turn it on. The new hero, the new middleweight. Extreme fighting champion of the world, beating Mario Sperry in how much time? Did nearly, we get time? Nearly 13 minutes in this match, and he was almost out of this several times. Maybe that's even bigger than the victory itself, is that he didn't just come in there and shock Mario Sperry, he escaped from certain loss several times, which says a lot for never giving up in a fight and always knowing the moves. Who's the toughest 199 pounder on earth? Here is Igor. That was the move of the night. Right there. He sensed Mario Sperry's weight above him and went the other way. He did it before when he amazed us with the escape. What a sense of body misdirection by Igor Zinoviev. What a he went against the grain all night. My God, this man has proved himself to be the strongest, most resilient, and the fiercest fighter in the 199-pound category, bar none. Well, John, a legend has been Born. I couldn't have said it better. You know, you put on these competitions. Let's get the final information now from Scott Berlinger. At 11.39 of the match, Stop. winner and new Battlecade Extreme Fighting Middleweight World Champion by submission, Igor Zinoviev. So Igor Zinoviev, John Peretti, what a way to cap this evening that Igor Zinoviev has written a new chapter in extreme fighting, and what a night to do it. People tuning in for the first time, perhaps, seeing a legend replaced. I'm flabbergasted. What can I say? I mean, we have seen the best match that I could summon up, and here it is. You know, the strangest ending. This has been a tremendous thrill here. Dave Bontempo, thank you so much. John, it's been a thrill on my end as well. Nice match that you made, too. Well, we are so happy you joined us for Extreme Fighting. For everybody in the crew, for John Peretti, this is Dave Fontepo saying so long, everybody, and see you for Extreme Fighting 2. Bye-bye.